You want to get to know Google Chat and find out how you could best use it? I'm Chanel Greco from Saparis, and in this video I'll give you a detailed guide of Google Chat. There are two ways of communicating in Google Chat. The first is a private conversation. Use a direct message to communicate with a colleague or a small group of people. Second, create a room. Use a room to have an ongoing conversation with a group of people that can change over time. So let's get started by accessing chat. I click on Google Apps and then on chat. There you go. So the first thing we th see over here is kind of like our navigation panel, if you want to call it that way. And I want to start a new chat with a specific person. I can click on this plus icon and either search for a person or if I chat with them often, they'll be uh, uh, under the recently used, you could call it. Uh, let's click on create. Um, I do not want the desktop app at the moment. So there you go. So now I can chat with Adam. Hey, Adam, what uh, about something random? How do I send this chat? I could click on the send button here. Um, easier, I believe, is just to click on the enter keyboard. And so now that has been sent. So in the meantime, we see Adam is typing. There you go, and this is how it looks when um, Jane gets a new a new message. And you see here, there's kind of like Smart Compose. Um, I can just simply click on it and maybe add a uh, smiley. There you go. And this is how we can chat back and forth together. So, so far, so good. That's when I'm chatting or what I'm communicating was with one specific person. What about if I want to communicate with two people? Well, then I would create a group chat. So I can just si simply click in here. Uh, this gives kind of like opens up a drop down menu with further things um, with further action items. And this time I'm going to choose start group conversation. And I'm going to choose from the frequent people I communicate with, click on that. And now I can write, I'm like, I don't know. Hey team, what's up? And this is now a group chat. Um, very important to note, group chat is, are only possible with people within your same organization. So I could not add anyone external to this group chat. If I wanted to also chat with external people, I could either use a one-on-one -on -one chat or rooms. So if you create a new room, I'm going to click on the plus here on rooms, um, demo with external, I can add external people, Craig, um, there you go. I could also add, there you go, and he's labeled as external. Ah, it says external users not allowed. Why not? Because I forgot to to um, mark allow people outside my organization. So there you go, now he is allowed. I can also add um, Adam to it so I can have a mix between internal and external um, and create that. By the way, um, I can also have a little fun icon here. I don't know, uh, a herb face, there you go. So it, it'll create that. It's taken a little bit long today, I must admit. Okay. Now, if I ever want to know who is part of a room, then I can click up here. By the way, there's a drop down, so that always means click on it and it gives me further information like view members. So now all the members of this room um, will be shown here. Um, you see, can join external. So that's because we said that in this external room, also people from outside or in this room, also people from outside of our um, organization can add, uh, can join. We can also add further people to a room, like we could add Chanel if we wanted to. There you go. And what else can we do? 
uh, edit the name, emoji, manage webhooks. Um, that might be interesting of, let's say, um, you have a group, a room, um, with all your IT administrators or your server administrators, and you have a webhook that lets you know or that sends you messages whenever your server is down. That could be interesting. You can pin this. This is kind of like um, your favorites, pinning it to the top. Um, what else do we have? We can turn off notifications so that we will only hear a sound and be notified when we um, are at mentioned in a chat. We can leave this room or we can block a report. Um, there's something that we have to understand about rooms. Rooms are, if you're coming from Slack, they're similar. But with rooms, what's a bit special is that you cannot delete them. So once they're created, they're kind of like there forever. I wonder if Google is going to change it in the future. But at the moment, it's so that when you create a room, you can't delete it, but you can leave it. If you are not interested in that topic anymore, you can just simply leave that room, but the room is still there. The other people will still be there and your messages that you've shared in that room will, will also still be there. Okay, so um, let's say we want to write in this room. Rooms give us the possibility of writing or of creating threads, as we call it, or Google also refers to them as um, conversations. This is typically, um, I would say, per topic in a room, you have a separate thread. So let's say you were working in a project. I don't know, launching a new CRM, then you could have, let's say, everything that's, you know, organizational would be one thread, everything like the questions for the developers would be in a different thread, then the reporting of the bugs would be in a separate thread. So that's how you could work with threads. So I'm just going to create a new thread. Exactly. Got it. Um, this is th thread number one. I also want to, um, Use this possibility um, or this, yeah, this possibility of showing you that you can add documents. So I can add documents from Google Drive. Let's say um, shared drives, digital business strategy. I don't know, an image from, there you go. Just somehow like that, just something random. And again, um, and this, oh, this is very interesting. This is pretty cool. Um, this is one of the features I love of all these integrated apps in Google Workspace. What it's telling me here is that I'm sharing a document with people and I have to make sure that they can actually access this document because at the moment that is not the case. At least Craig Fred Smith, who is not within our organization, will not have accessing rights to this document that I'm sharing in a joint room with him. So that might not make sense. So that's why this pop-up lets me know, hey, you need to share this document with people. So I can say, yeah, I'll give him commenting right and I'll save that. And now it has changed my drive permissions. And the second th thread would be like so, second thread, there you go. And you know what, let me in the meantime, go over uh, to Adam's account and just add something to the first thread so that we can see how that looks. Um, first thread coming in, one, two, three. Let's see how, how will we see that. Ah, okay, so this up here was updated and here I also see a new message has appeared. So that's how we can work together um, with these threads. Starting November 16th, 2020, new rooms created in Google Chat will be unthreaded by default. This means that when you create a new room, conversations will not use threads unless you turn on threading. There are two more things I would like to mention about rooms in Google Chat. First being, you can have a maximum of 8,000 people in a room. And the second is, as soon as you at mention someone uh, in this chat or in this room, and they are not a member of this room yet, as soon as you at mention them, then they will automatically be added as a member to this room, which absolutely makes sense because I mean, app mentions is so only something you use when you're actually, you know, in a room and you directly want to address one person and give them some information. So I think that makes sense. 
Okay, so I showed you before you can add uh, documents from Google Drive. Um, we already saw the uh, emojis. And here you can also upload files from your computer. I don't know, let's upload a code snippet here. There you go. And um, the last thing I want to mention is the start a video call or a Google Meet call. So I'm just going to click that. Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't send this. So there, um, here, code snippet, there you go. So now if I click on this, what it did now is it added or it will add, there you go, now it's sent, it will add or it now it added this video meeting. So if I click on this, I'm directly brought to this video call. Oh, I have to authenticate myself again. Okay. But what would happen if I were to keep, um, you know, enter my login credentials is I'm brought to this Google Meet call and anybody else who's a member and has and sees this thread can also click on the link and we're automatically together in this Google Meet call. I think this makes sense if you're in a room, in a thread, you know, writing back and forth and at a certain point you say, I think it's better we discuss this together in a video call. Well, then that's the way you would uh, use this. And as a matter of fact, if I click on a one on one chat with Adam, you can do the exact same thing. Um, let's have a short call and then we could both um, access this video call together. That's really super, super easy. There's also a search functionality that we can use uh, in Google Meet. And let me just go ahead and there you go. Um, if you click on the search icon here, let's say I'm searching for party, I just press enter. And now I'm presented, for instance, with a room where, I don't know, something about a party has been written. So do try out the search functionality. If you're searching for something specific, I can click on the X and then it goes away again. By the way, I can also, if I now hover over Adam here, um, the chat with Adam, if I click on the more actions, uh, again, I can pin or unpin it. And what I also can do is, and this might be interesting if the, you know, if that section becomes very long, if you have a lot of separate chats with people that you can like hide conversations. So that's a good possibility. So now that's hidden. And let's go over here, uh, demonstrate this with um, myself, with Chanel. You can also delete conversations. That's a possibility. And you can block someone. Now, blocking means that that specific person cannot send you these direct messages. So the one-on-one -on -one chatting is disabled, but the person, if it is, if if she or he is together with you in a room or in a group chat, those messages you still will receive, but they can't directly message you. So that's a possibility. Um, depending on your situation, that might make sense. Before we wrap this up, there are still a couple of things I would like to show you. One of them being history. So if you go on a chat with either one person or here you go, or with a group, if I click on it here on the top, you'll see something extra turn off history. Now, this depends very much on the settings that your administrator, your Google Workspaces administrator has made. But if your admin has allowed history, then on a per chat basis, you can decide if you want to keep history on or if you want to turn it off. In case you turn it off, then the messages will be deleted automatically after 24 hours. So this is something that um, that, that you can configure yourself, provided your admin grants you turning on uh, history on or off. So that's the history part. Then I do also want to click back into here because there's certain things we haven't seen yet. So we did see how to use a start group conversation. You can also create a room from this navigation panel. We can browse rooms. Now, in my case, um, I won't be finding all too much, but um, depending on your organization, there might be a lot of rooms. So if I search for uh, party, nope, it didn't find it, which is funny because I have it here. I guess because I already have it here, it's not showing it. Um, but um, I, I do have accounts with organizations where, where they have a lot of rooms on a lot of different subjects. Um, I don't know, JavaScript programming, you go and search for it and you can just add yourself to a room. So that's a possibility. Find a bot. Um, here are some standard bots provided. Um, 
A customer of mine has a pretty cool bot where um, the IT department created their own bot that, and within their organization, you can add that bot. Um, what I typically add as a bot to my own Google Workspace um, account is the Google Drive bot. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, message. There you go. It's a bit slow today. Okay, so um, do I want to turn off drive notifications? Yes, I do. Um, this is pretty cool because whenever I'm like um, mentioned in, um, I don't know, in a Google Docs document, for instance, or a task is assigned to me, I do not only receive an email, but I also receive a notification from the Google Drive bot. This is something I think is pretty cool that I um, usually work with. So you might want to go ahead and um, find, you know, search for a bot that you might like. And the last item we see here when we click on um, in this field is message requests. And here you will receive um, requests from people from outside of your organization who on Google chat or also on Hangouts chat have um, invited you to discuss with them. Here we see spam. If I click on that, I see that one external person, that's me with my other external account, is trying to contact Jane, I can click on it, I can accept it, and I'll start um, chatting with this person here. Interesting to note here, so even here we have kind of like a spam filter protecting us from people randomly adding us. Okay, um, settings. We haven't looked at the settings yet. Up here is the gear icon. If you click on that, by the, by the way, there's an, a chat app um, that you can install on your computer. I do say you could try that out. Um, Personally, I do not use it. I'm not such a huge fan of it just because I uh, prefer using Google Chat in my browser and um, pinning it so that makes the tab smaller. That's just the way I like to work, but I do know others work with the, with the browser, with the app that you can install on your computer, be it Windows or Mac. So anyway, in the settings, we have a couple of possibilities, um, specifically push notifications, enable them, disable them, also app mentions. One I want to point out to is the smart reply. You remember when Adam uh, wrote me something that I was automatically um, bliss displayed some sensible um, uh, things that I could write back that I just clicked on, kind of like, I'm happy to hear from you too, or something like that. Well, these are the smart replies, which you can enable or also disable. And here you would also see who you have blocked and which rooms you have blocked. So let's close that out. And up here, at the moment I'm active, I can also go and change that because I might not want to be bothered all the time by these incoming chats, um, especially that the noise can be quite annoying if you're trying to concentrate or something. Or something that I experience a lot is when we're in video, uh, in Google Meet video conferencing calls and the person presenting or talking forgot to mute their new notifications on Google Chat. Well, guess what? We all can hear that they just received the message. So here you can go ahead and mute yourself. Um, I'm hoping that in the future, Google will add the possibility of custom Customizing how long you want to be muted. At the moment, we only have these default times um, that we can choose from. Clicking on notification settings brings us back here to these settings. So if I'm um, if I'm here, but I don't want to be uh, I don't want to be bothered. Let's say for the last next thirty minutes, I want to you know work concentrated. Then there you go. Um, I will not be bothered by any incoming messages. Let me know if you think that Google Chat will benefit you or your organization. And would you mind subscribing to my YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below? Because every week I publish new video tutorials about Google Chat, Google Meet, and the other apps that are part of Google Workspace, and I would not want you to miss out on any of those videos.